So let's quickly talk about um, how to service and check your clutch. If you want to service your clutch, if you want to change your clutch, before you change the clutch, you'll want to have a few things. You'll need to buy some new uh, friction plates and plane plates. So they will come as a set. So just take them all off there. So what? On this particular clutch, I have um, I have five friction plates and I have four plane plates. So there will always be one more friction plate than a plane plate, and um, you will have to buy them as a set. You can't just replace one. You can't just replace a friction plate. You can't just replace a plane plate. That's just not the way that it's uh, recommended that you do it. You have to replace them as a set. It's not that expensive. So, you know, to make sure that your clutch is working perfectly, it's an important part of the motorcycle, you need to replace them as a set. <clears throat> so you'll, you'll need to have the set of plates if you're going to replace the clutch in your motorcycle. You will also need possibly to have a gasket. So the gasket is this, this basically it's there to create an oil seal. So when the clutch cover is fitted, I've removed it off this one obviously, but when the clutch cover is fitted back on, <clears throat> You need to have a good quality gasket that isn't damaged and when you're removing the clutch cover there is a good chance that you may damage or already have a damaged uh, gasket. So a new gasket I think there might be maybe 10-20 euros at most so to make sure that you're uh, not going to be losing any oil when you after you replace your clutch you need to probably make sure you have a gasket before you attempt that job. So how do you know whether your clutch is good or bad? Well, if the clutch is doing its job, then when you pull on the clutch cable, you should be able to come to a stop. The engine will still be running and the motorcycle will not be moving. And when you start to release the clutch lever, your motorbike should start moving again. Now if you find that when you release the clutch lever that the motorbike is not moving or is struggling to move or when you rev the engine you find that it's not the, the motorbike movement or motion is not um, <clears throat> responding to releasing you know, the revs on the engine or releasing the clutch lever, then it's a sign that the the um, disc, the the clutch discs need replacing. So why would they need replacing? Well, they would need replacing because the friction plate has a it's a metal plate but it has a friction material, a special friction material on it. And that friction material, over time, because it's rotating quite a bit, it's rotating some of the time independently of the rest of the clutch pack, it's rotating against the plane plate and it is actually, if you listen, you can hear that noise is the friction plate scraping off the plane plate. So that scraping due to the motion means that the friction material gets scratched off the uh, friction plate over time or it gets worn off, gets worn down and we end up with a, a friction plate that no longer creates friction when the pack is nice and is meant to be nice and tight when the springs are applied we find that the all of a sudden the friction plates are no longer catching with the plane plates and <clears throat> as a result when the 
crankshaft is turning, it no longer brings the input shaft with it. So how do you know, again, more accurately, whether your friction plates are worn or not? Well, to know for sure, you need to open up your bike, take off the clutch cover, take out the clutch pack, and you need to have a digital calipers or a vernier calipers, which is used for accurately measuring. So set that to zero, that's zero there now. So you will need to have the service manual for your particular model of motorcycle, and you will be able to use a, a calipers to measure essentially measure the thickness of the material. In this case it's three millimeters. So you will measure the thickness of each of the friction plates. So as you can see here you will measure the thickness of each of the friction plates. It's three millimeters in this case. Now as that friction material wears, the thickness of that plate might go down to two millimeters, something like that. <clears throat> and there will be a limit on how thin that each of these friction plates. So you will have to measure each of the five friction plates, the thickness, probably at a couple of points, and determine whether they are within the service limit or not. So it might be two, two millimeters as I said. So you might take off your plates, check your clutch, and you might find it's 2.5, then you will know that you've probably halfway through the life of your clutch and you should be good to put it back in. Okay, so that's the first thing you want to check. The second thing you want to check is you want to find a flat surface, a perfectly flat surface, and you want to put your each of the plates, both the friction plates and the plane plates, on that surface and check for warpage in any of the plates. So what you'll do is you'll put it on a perfectly flat surface. You can kind of check it, you will get a feel for it, this is obviously not a perfectly flat surface, but you will find a perfectly flat surface and you will be able to check whether there is points, so maybe this part here is raised up, you maybe you might be able to see it. You can also get a feeler gauge and you'll be able to basically stick it in, see if you can stick it in at any other points um, and check for warpage in the plates. So every single plate should be checked for warpage because if the plates are warped, then they're not going to catch properly. <clears throat> so if the friction plate is warped, it means that at a particular surface area of the friction plate that's meant to be, the whole plate is meant to be touching off the plane plate, but if it's warped, then only part of it is going to be touching off the plane plate. And it's not going to be creating that friction properly. And it's it's a ability to get that clutch pack working as one unit is going to be reduced. So then the next thing you're going to check when you are servicing your motorcycle, your, your clutch on your motorcycle, is you're going to check, you're going to check the teeth on the primary driven gear are all in good shape. There should be no chipped teeth, there should be no damage on any of the teeth, they should not be worn. So in this one, this is a brand new engine, so they're all perfect. Put this back in. This first. Okay, so you'll want to make sure that the teeth on your primary driven gear are all in good shape. Now the other thing we want to note is that when the clutch pack is sitting in the clutch basket, like so, as the pressure comes on and off the clutch pack through the pulling of the clutch lever in your left hand, it's going to create, there's going to be a pressure on the plates on the clutch pack, so the clutch pack is going to be compressed and reduced due to that pressure from the springs being increased or decreased. Okay, 
So as a result, as the pressure comes on and off, the clutch pack or the clutch plates, the friction plates, are going to be moving just ever so slightly. I don't know if they move even more than one millimeter, maybe two or three millimeters at the very most. There might be that little bit of a motion inside the clutch pack of the plates as the pressure from the springs is reduced or increased. Okay? And that means that the clutch pack is actually moving slightly. So it's going to be moving, the plates are going to be moving just ever so slightly in the <coughs> in the basket of the, the clutch basket. So that means that they're going to be just moving that ever so slightly like this. Okay, I'm obviously amplifying that movement, but there's going to be that little bit of a slight movement. And that slight movement is going to re result in a sort of a scraping motion. So there's going to be this little scraping motion or movement between the friction plate and the clutch basket. And that means that the grooves in the clutch basket can be worn over time. And if there is a little wear, if there is too much wear in the clutch basket, what it will result in is that the when you reduce the pressure, when you pull on your clutch, you might find that one of the plates is actually catching so a plate might catch in a little groove, if there's any little grooves in the clutch basket. So you'll check your clutch basket for grooves. It should be really, you know, perfectly smooth. As I run my finger along here, it should be perfectly smooth the whole way around. And that will allow the friction plates to move freely in the clutch basket, as they should. If there is any little grooves, you can, you can fix it, possibly by using a little metal file to file it smooth again. Um, it's probably something that rarely happens in, in, a, in clutches, but it can happen, that's something you're meant to check. The next thing you have to check is the springs themselves. So because the springs are important for applying that pressure on the pack, if you don't have good springs, you're not going to have good pressure, and you're not going to be able to get movement uh, of the input shaft from the crankshaft. So, next thing you're going to use your digital calipers to measure the length of your, each of the springs. So each of these springs will have to be measured. Again, you will need your service manual to measure the length of each spring. And this one here, it's about 35 millimeters. So it's the unpressurized length of the spring. So you don't apply any pressure, you just Essentially, there we go. There's the, you can read it there, it's 35 millimeters. So once you know that length, you're going to do it for each of the springs, and you're going to compare that length to the service manual. So the, to the length in the service manual, there's going to be a minimum length. It might be 33 millimeters. So if you find that your spring is no longer measuring more than 33 millimeters, those springs will have to be replaced. And again, you are better off replacing the springs as a set, so the four springs would have to be replaced in this case, because you don't want to have one spring at 35 millimeter and the other two springs that are 33.5. So the other three you might find are within the limit, just about, whereas this spring might not be within the limit. So you don't, you don't replace one spring, you replace them as a set. Um, <clears throat> so that's just simple. You will then check the push rod to make sure that the things like the push rod are in good condition, that it's not bent, it's not broken. There's going to be some bearings, on, particularly on the lifting plate we have a little bearing, so that bearing actually exert, feels quite a bit of pressure and it has to do the job of being able to rotate freely. So you need to check that bearing, make sure that it's really nice and firm, which it is in this case. It's not loose in any way, it's not making any sort of a noise, it's rotating freely, there's no signs of damage or wear. And that essentially should be it. So you will replace, in this case, you're going to replace all the, 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 the plates, 
Okay, so you replace them as a set, as I discussed. You're putting them back onto the new the new plates back onto your clutch center, and you're just going to then reassemble the uh, the clutch in just the reverse order to which I disassembled it. Now the other thing to know with a clutch, what can affect its performance. There's, again, there's just so many things that can affect the performance of a clutch. It's not just about the friction plates, okay? It's also about the springs, but it's also about how much you've torqued down. You have to torque down the springs to a particular value when you're re Re, um, rebuilding your clutch and you need to torque down these bolts to the, to the spec in the service manual to make sure that the pressure, the right pressure is applied to the springs. And then lastly what can affect the performance of a clutch is the engine oil. So in this particular en engine the clutch, it's a wet clutch so that means that the clutch sits, it shares the same oil as the rest of the engine. So it's not going to be, basically it's not going to be, the engine is not going to be full to the brim with oil, but there is going to be oil in the engine up to a particular level, and the clutch is going to be spinning, and it's going to be, that oil is going to be um, getting all over that clutch. So the friction plates will, and the pressure plates, the whole unit will be bathed in oil. And uh, so, if you use the wrong, the oil of the wrong viscosity or the wrong type of oil, each manufacturer for each engine, they will they will ha recommend. It'll be again in either the service manual or the owner's manual what um, spec oil is to be used with that particular engine. And uh, they will obviously have recommended that spec of oil to suit not just the engine but to suit the clutch. So if you put in oil, you decide, okay, somebody suggests you to discover a new oil that has better lubrication capabilities, it's better for the engine, it's better for the gears, it's going to cause your engine to run for 100,000 kilometers longer, that's great. But that might not be suitable for the clutch. So the clutch wants to have a particular viscosity of oil or a particular spec of oil, oil spec. So it might be 10W40, might be the general oil that you will find in most motorcycles in most countries. If that's what's recommended, then you should stick to 10W40. The reason being that because the oil on the friction plates and, and between the friction plates and the um, plane plates that oil, oil between the friction plates and the, the plane plates is going to reduce that friction okay and that friction is going to be reduced to a particular value with 10W40 oil so if you use 5W40 oil 5W30, whatever speck of oil you use, it's going to change how the friction plate uh, gels with the plane plates and it's going to affect how the clutch actually works. So you might find that your clutch is slipping not because of the friction plates being worn but because you're using the wrong type of oil. So the, the engine oil is actually very important to the function uh, or the proper function of the clutch. So that's it. Hopefully that's uh, everything I know about clutches. Uh, I think that will serve you well when you go to take a look at and examine or rebuild or replace the clutch plates on your own clutch. Uh, hopefully that's going to help you diagnose some of the problems that you might be encountering in the future or at the present with the clutch or the engine.